Hello everyone, it's Charlton. Please subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell. Come on, Peanut. I'd appreciate it majorly. So, just want to give you a little update that uh, I saw over at Eric Rosoth and uh, Nate Eaton's Twitter feed. And I'm going to be busy today. i got a busy day. So, um, who are both from... East Idaho news and uh, you know it's just not a ton of ton of info but it's I think pretty significant was that that uh, reportedly Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow are on the move and you know um, Nate Eaton not not a and Eric Grossoth he's the one I saw it there first he had a picture of an airplane but that was from their January trip than when they were there so you know whether take whether they're taking a commercial flight out of there or not you know, that's not known. Nate Eaton said at his Twitter feed that his sources say they're heading, uh, the reports are they're heading to Maui, which is just another island of Hawaii. I don't know Hawaii real well. Kauai, if I'm pronouncing that right, is the smallest island. It's sort of at the uh, most southern tip of Hawaii, I think, the most southern, southern eastern tip of, of, the, of the string of islands. And... Um, so supposedly uh, they're heading to Maui, which is, I think Honolulu. Honolulu is the next island over. That's not the island, but the city's on the next island over. This is, uh, and I think I think Maui's bigger. It doesn't matter. So, I mean, I think when Lori um, sort of disappeared with Ty Lee back in. January, February for two and a half months or something like that. I can't remember the exact time frame. This how long she just disappeared for, and supposedly abandoned Charles Vallow and JJ. You know, right when Charles Vallow was filing paperwork for a divorce and, and talking to attorneys about ridiculous stories of you know end of the world and that Lori wanted to kill him and all this other stuff. I think that trip they were you know laying the groundwork. For, for for this and uh, visiting these places and setting up houses to to uh, not even necessarily renting but I'm not real sure you know but I, I think that's what they were doing and I think I do think I think uh, they were just getting you know they, they they needed to know where they could rent and just feel it out and you know maybe even sent sign rental agreements for the future I, I'm not real sure I think it seems as though they have unlimited funds you know which makes things a lot easier. But I think there's, I think there's, I think, you know, I think there's duplicates of things, you know, there's, there's one that's basically, you know, um, off the grid that nobody knows about and the one where they're, where they're circulating right now. So I get, I'm pretty sure there's, there's a whole nother network of places they could stay when things get real hairy and, uh, and, and they just need to slip out the back door and try to disappear altogether. So you know, uh, that's pretty much it. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see where they end up. You know my theory, my theories. And uh, there's much, much more, believe me. You know, um, this seems to be way bigger than just Chad and Lori Daybell. I mean, at the very minimum, you have to, you have to. I mean, it's, it's only common sense that, you know, they have to be getting help. I mean, there's no way they could have done all. Let's say they did kill those, you know, or they arranged these murders or whatever. They couldn't have done that all by themselves. And they didn't arrange these murders. I believe, you know, those, like I've said several times, those three persons, uh, Charles Vallow, Alex Cox, and uh, Tammy De uh, Daybell, I think they all managed to fake their deaths and that they're all still, still three, uh, all three still alive. You know, I obviously don't know that for sure. And I also think that um, somehow these people were involved in the Northern Mexico massacre where, um, you know, the women and children were shot and killed and some burned alive. The caravan from Sonora, Sonora, Mexico, I think, which is like the county. Um, and there's a town, if it's Bene Vista or something like that. That's not the town where the, where their community is. The community of the LeBaron fam, family and the Lang, Langford, Langford family, I think is the other family of like 150 Latter-day Saints, fundamentalist members of the community. And they were traveling from that city to another city in, in Mexico that was southeast of it when they were um, ambushed. And I believe, I believe these people were involved in the ambush. And I believe they were basically hijacking them because they were transporting drugs. And I think that's how they did it. I think they used women 
to transport the drugs, drugs even with children accompanying them, because that's like the perfect cover that you just would never ever suspect, you know, that. And uh, I think they were involved in that too, you know? And I, the reason I think that is because of what you see in the Rexburg storage unit surveillance footage of Lori coming and going along with Alex Cox, sometimes together, sometimes Alex Cox by himself, one time Alex Cox with another individual, whether that's Chad Daybell or maybe even Charles Vallow, bringing out what looks to be, you know, Nate Eaton called it a tote with something hanging over the edge. I'd say it's a large, huge seat of back seat of a car, of a SUV, you know, that I think would be um, uh, as, as well as a tire, because I think there was probably drugs st stashed in one of those vehicles in northern Mexico during the massacre. The uh, either the Chevy Tahoe or the uh, Chevy Suburban, I would guess one of the Chevy Suburbans, and they had to have something to replace replace the car seat that they would take out, the one that had the drugs in it, and they had to have a tire to replace the tire that they take off the vehicle that, that had the drugs in it. Otherwise, you know, people would instantly know that it was a drug smuggling operation and it would have, it wouldn't end there, you know? And, uh, that's pretty much, uh, the story there, man. All right. I'm busy today. And I was showing you my, a little bit of my work. I'm kind of proud of it. Even though it's super easy. It's exactly the kind of work I'm like, you know, I like to do because it's easy mentally of uh, just putting down the real uh, landscape timbers that rot out so easy now. The wood you get today is nothing, not near as good as, you know, something that was just made 10 or 15 years ago. Thanks for watching my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. I'll see you in the next video. Later, man.